This lesson is going to demonstrate the use of a Naive Bayes classifier in practice. This will give you experience with Naive Bayes classification, demonstrate some of the basic operations required to prepare text for classification, and show you a few more techniques of from R. To start, let's start up a copy of R Studio, and I'm going to load a pre-prepared knitter file that has the commands we're going to work with. First, we're going to load the Stringer library and ggplot for simple string manipulation and for some visualizations. I'm going to go over the basic functions I've defined for this project. The first one is a function called readText. It is going to read a text file, possibly gzipped or compressed, and it's going to take lines 1000 through 3000 from that file. The files we're going to work with are plays of Shakespeare and Marlowe from Project Gutenberg. Project Gutenberg is an open source of text, and most Gutenberg files contain header and tail, tail information about Project Gutenberg. So we're going to cut lines from the middle of the file to get text from the authors. We're going to concatenate all lines in this region together, and then split this text into 200 word chunks. Each of these 200 word chunks will consider another document by the author in question. So when we cut up a play of Shakespeare into 200 word chunks, we're actually going to consider it a number of small documents. The reason we do this is we need a number of documents to get statistics to build our Naive Bayes model, and we're going to simulate that just by cutting up one larger document. For each document, we're only going to count two grams once, i.e. we're going to use a Bernoulli model for our Naive Bayes classification. However, across many documents, we can get larger counts and useful statistics. Our next function is 2 gram string. That takes a block of text, tokenizes it, builds all the 2 grams, 2 grams again being consecutive text tokens, and returns the set of 2 grams found in the document without counts or repetition. Git counts is a function that takes a list of documents and applies 2 gram string to every single one. All of these functions are what we want, what we call, are in what we call very idiomatic R. We are applying to the list of documents the function 2 gram string using R's lapply command. We're then using R's onList command to take the list of results and flatten it into a single sequence of results. So the onList is the concatenation of all the 2 grams found in every document. Then we're using the R table command to count how often each 2 gram occurs. This wrapping of functions directly and vector form is very idiomatic R. Finally, we define a very simple convenience function, lookup values. It takes a table of statistics, such as produced by git counts, and a key, the key in this case being a 2 gram, or a vector of keys. And for each key, looks up how many times the 2 gram occurred. The only thing that lookup values is doing that's different than native R is for any missed value, it's returning the number 0 instead of missing or na. Nah. That way, for any 2 gram we've never seen, we get a count of 0 instead of a na, nah, which would mess up calculations. We'll load those functions. Now we're ready to actually work with the data. I've downloaded four plays from Gutenberg. You can see their numbers in the file names, which are the Gutenberg file numbers. I've loaded Shakespeare's Macbeth, Shakespeare's Hamlet, Marlowe's Edward II, and Marlowe's Faustus. The point is that both of these were British writers from around the same time. So the text should be in similar language and therefore interesting to compare. We'll run these lines to get the files in. You'll notice that R is capable of reading compressed gzipped files. It decides to decompress them just based on the extension. That's very convenient. And then we'll take a look at what does one of these files look like. So the Marlowe's Edward II starts with this text here and ends with this text here, confirming that we've cut the Gutenberg headers and tailors off. And these block numbers, like 76, and one say that basically we got two 
we got 76 blocks of around length 200 out of the Marlowe text. Just to make things look like we always work, we'll arrange the training data into a training data frame. And this has a column called docs and a column which gives us whether we're Shakespeare or not. And we've told the data frame constructor to not convert strings as factors. We don't want these large paragraphs becoming unique factors. That gives us a number of examples to train on. You see we have 131 examples, some of which were from Marlowe, some of which were from Shakespeare. We can see by the mean of the Is Shakespeare column about 41% or 42% of the training documents were marked as being in Shakespeare. We can also treat this data frame like any other and view it. We see the left column is the docs, thankfully truncated, and further on is the title and the declared class. Now we're going to build our statistics. This block of text is exactly like the total counts block from our slide. What we're doing is we're getting the two grams of every document in our training set, whether it was Shakespeare or Marlowe. Then we build statistics for the Shakespeare portion of the data set and we build statistics for the Marlowe proportion of the data set. Again, this is idiomatic vectorized R, and the reason we got all the tokens from both Shakespeare and Marlowe together is so we could put the counts in the vector in the exact same positions, even though one of these classes may have tokens, the other does not. Now, from these basic statistics, we can build our fundamental statistics, as in our previous lecture. For instance, we build the prior probabilities of being Shakespeare and Marlowe, both smoothed, and we build the conditional probability of a feature being present given it was from a Shakespeare document and a Marlowe document. Again, we've smoothed all these numbers and taken logarithms for convenience. You notice in these denominators I wrote plus 2 instead of plus 2.0. That's because in R, most arithmetic defaults to floating point even for integer types. This is very convenient. Integer division is written as a different operator than the slash. Now we define a function that scores a document. This function works as follows. It takes a text and extracts the 2 gram. It then, just as in our previous lecture, takes the prior probability of Shakespeare, log prior probability, and adds it to the sum of all the conditional evidence probabilities. Similarly, for the probability of not being Shakespeare, or in this case Marlowe, it builds the complementary probabilities. We then exponentiate these log probabilities, subject to a shift to prevent underflow, as described in our previous lecture, to get two unscaled probabilities. We compute the scaling constant z and return the probability scaled by z as our estimated probability of a text being Shakespeare. Since this is now properly scaled, 1 minus this is the probability of the text being Marlowe. Let's apply this to some training data. So the first row of the Shakespeare training set, Macbeth, is classified as having probability of 1.0 of coming from Shakespeare. The first row of the Marlowe training set, Marlowe Edward III, is classified as having probability of 10 to the minus 42 of being Shakespeare. So we've gotten very strong classifications on our training data. Doesn't prove the classifiers actually do anything useful, but it's important to check first chunk of Shakespeare's Hamlet, a play we did not use in training, shows a very high probability of being Shakespeare. Great news. First chunk of Marlowe's Faustus, a document also we did not use for training, shows a high probability of being Shakespeare. This is a misclassification. However, the second chunk shows a minuscule chance of being Shakespeare, i.e. is correctly classified as Marlowe. Obviously, this model is not very good. It's only using a few crude features like bigrams or two grams. You would certainly want to add more important features and maybe do some stemming and proper document prep. Also, it was trained on a very limited set of data, one play of Shakespeare, one play of Marlowe. But we can play with it. We can put in Neil Armstrong's famous quote, which is 80% likely to be Shakespeare. Looks more like Shakespeare than Marlowe. We can put in a famous Alfred Tennyson quote, looks 
only 38% chance of being Shakespeare under the model, so it looks more like Marlowe. And we can put in a Francis Bacon quote, which the model says is 93% like Shakespeare. We can apply the model to every single row in our data, just like we would any other model. We call the vector apply to the doc column of our training data, our scoring function, and this little C0 says return a type of array called double, and we've told it that by giving it an example double array. The model has now been applied to every row in the training data, and we can examine the results. What we see is class zero, or the red class, are all the training examples that were known to be authored by Marlowe. And we're getting a histogram here of the scores. And basically, almost every one of them is scored as having a score of 0.0. .0. Obviously, there's a few others. See this color down here. Similarly, the teal or one group is all training documents known to be from Shakespeare. Chunks are from this one play. And they're all getting a score of 1.0. This is very common for naive Bayes classifiers, that the scores tend to be concentrated around one or two values. Another reason they're not to be trusted is probabilities. We can look at some aggregates. The rows, labels, or whether it is Shakespeare or not, and the predictions for the average Marlowe chunk, we get a 10 to the minus, 2 times 10 to the minus third classification. And for the average Shakespeare chunk, we get essentially a 1.0 classification. And we can look at that as a mean or a median, and the median effect is even stronger than the mean. Now let's apply the model. Let's build a test data frame. For this, we'll use the two documents we didn't use for training, Shakespeare's Hamlet and Marlowe's Faustus. We'll run the model on every single line of the test data and plot the new results. At this point, we see slightly more equivocal results. Class 0 Marlowe is largely concentrated at 0, as we would expect, though obviously some chunks score all over the place. Class 1 Shakespeare is largely concentrated at 1. However, there is a significant population of chunks from the Shakespeare that the model does not think look like Shakespeare. We can look at our aggregates. It says the average Marlowe chunk is given a 16% chance of being Shakespeare. And the average Shakespeare chunk is given a 60% chance, or 59% chance, of being Shakespeare. The median, of course, amplifies the effect. The median Marlowe chunk is given a 0.3% chance of being Shakespeare. And the median Shakespeare chunk is given a 91% chance of being Shakespeare, which says basically more than half the mass of the chunks for Shakespeare were above the 0.9 region. And this is a classic trick when you have a classifier that's not working as well as you want in individuals. You aggregate and then see if the prediction over means or medians or trimmed means is better. What you should take away from this demonstration is knowledge of what a naive Bayes classifier implementation looks like. It essentially looks like aggregation over features, sums and counts, ratios to make probabilities. You should also feel comfortable applying a naive Bayes classifier to text. Experiments you can try are building a better classifier using more sophisticated features than 2 grams, or at least adding more data so you get a more general description of a given author. You can also try to compare more than two authors using so-called one versus many or one versus rest classifiers. That is where you group your data and build many classifiers to help decide between authors. Knife Bayes, in theory, can be made so-called multinomial, which means it can actually decide between many authors all at once. However, for simple exercises, it's probably better to try to classify among many authors just using simple binomial or pairwise naive based classifiers. Thank you.